All right, we're back with another episode, another uh, podcast of How To Music. Uh, I'm Joe Connors, Dave Connors, uh, and joining us today, we've got Matt Dunn, Roland Canada. Matt, thanks for making the trek up to Keswick. Thanks for having me. So we get to chat how to hybrid your music. Hybrid all music or just hybrid drum music? Well, we're going to talk all music, Okay. but we're definitely, because we've got drummers in the house today, bazinga. We're going to uh, maybe start on that angle. And a bass player. And a bass player. Hey, but we we're could, part of we the same section. Yeah, we could yeah, the please, rhythm section. Like yeah. you would ever have a drummer have a conversation and not at least tip the cap to their Absolutely. bass player. Absolutely. Right? Got to have one of us around. Exactly. Yeah. Represent. <laughs> so um, how to hybrid your music. So uh, part of this, uh, why you're such a great candidate to have uh, have you come out and join us. Not only are you a gigging drummer, uh, a, 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 you've done lots of years teaching music, playing it. Uh, but you're also now uh, part of the, the Roland family, Team Roland Canada, which is, yeah. I would say, uh, an industry leader in hybrid drums. And that's, I, I think, an understatement when you say, like, Absolutely. industry leader would be like, and like and who's the next guy exactly. on the list? There's guys, but yeah. Everyone Roland. else? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Kind Without of. being mean. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when we're talking about hybriding your music, we're talking about that, like, Roland, for example, they are, uh, I, as far as in my entire life, when you think electronic drums, V drums were were synonymous with that. I uh, in high school I played a, a V set um, uh, many many moons ago, and uh, and then watching the technology uh, evolve and grow. But now there's this this trend to be able to take it and make it a little less of like the two camps, yep. right? It's not like there's teams. You're team electronic or team acoustic. Yep. You can have your cake and eat it too. Hundred percent. Well, I think music in the last well, Roland Roland just celebrated their fiftieth anniversary, so. I think to you know in, within the last fifty years, music has drastically changed. Uh, I think how drummers think has dra- drastically changed. Uh, the way people construct music has drastically changed. So, um, you know, incorporating hybrid drums. When we say hybrid drums, you know, taking electronic elements and and putting them into your live performance. Um, we we work with a lot of great artists, uh, anywhere from the band, you know, the Arkells. Um, Sean Mendez band, so Mike Sleeth is a perfect example of someone who's a hybrid drummer. He plays, you know, modern day pop music in stadiums, but how do you replicate that sound live when you have, you know, claps and bells and things like that in today's pop music? How do you replicate that live? I don't think you'd leave that to the audience. Okay, you guys are going to clap <laughs> and you're going to clap on time well, properly. We, we've tried that. We've tried it. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, people, you know, friend, friends don't let friends clap on the one. Yeah, you know, like, it's good so. crowd participation, but, but you know, yeah. people, <laughs> Can't music, be trusted. Is, music is so perfect today. You know what I mean? Like Dave Grohl said it in an interview uh, 10 plus years ago is, you know, what makes music music is, is flaws and being a human, right? It's okay to have flaws, but in today's music and playing stadiums, that's almost it's almost not acceptable anymore. Like, music is so perfect, and it's, it's fine. You can make music perfect, but in order to make music perfect, you need to enhance technology into that conversation. Right. And and that's what we have. You know, um, Mike Mike. I bring back Mike Sleeth again, but he talks about his 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 beautiful DW kit, and then he incorporates uh, our our T mics, our SBD uh, trigger pad. Um, which which he then runs all all of the the entire band's uh, click track through, like that's right. that's huge, right? So you're playing a stadium instead of having everybody off running off a click track from a sound guy. You now have your drummer controlling all of that. So if you've rehearsed with that together, and all, it's it's going to be flawless. Yeah. Um. You know, to 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 be able to have the clicks, to be able to have the you know the element of of claps and tambourines and whatever you want to be. You could program yourself saying, let's go, and yeah. we'll play it. So. Like even samples that are from the studio that you yeah. couldn't even bring the equipment out to recreate 100%. that. You can take that sample and trigger that sample. Absolutely. You, you could take an or say you have an intro to a song that has an orchestral piece, right? You can, you're can you not going to bring a whole orchestral no. band with you. No, no. Yeah. Well, some bands yeah. like Aerosmith, or it depends on how big you are, but <laughs> yeah. like a, you can bring a symphony. But, you know, realistically, <laughs> if you're a touring artist, uh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Where now I, who is not a, a millionaire artist, can can take a sample from an orchestral track, 
incorporate that into my my band's live performance that's huge yeah well and i think it's different if you're doing a stadium show a one-off with an orchestra you can kind of coordinate that but you're right if you're touring and you're flying overseas and like to have that portability is crazy and i mean when we talk about the way light shows and pyrotechnics are all triggered now the drummer kind of curates all of that for the the ld right like i i don't think that um the idea of a jam light that you can just come up with that quality of a light show without pre-programming at all and then the band has to be synced with that pre-programming and how do you sync that and 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 you're not doing it with an acoustic kit no We're, we're hearing about bands now that are like literally canceling tours because their laptops have been um you know had an error and they couldn't get their tracks playing right like it's so important now to these musicians to incorporate electronic elements into their band's uh, live performance to the point where they almost can't perform now. Right. Unless they have these electronic elements because it's what the crowd expects. Yeah, the expectation, which it's funny because we come from a very opposite camp to that. I, I, in my head, I was just thinking of tales of like, if something were to, if, think of all the times where something has failed at the gig. So here, here's okay. Joe's hybrid drumming. <laughs> I forgot a drum throw. Okay. And a hi hat stand. Okay. But we have an extra mic stand in the cu- in the in the truck and a roll of duct tape and a coat hanger. Yeah. So we make a hi hat stand out of a mic stand and a coat hanger. This literally happened. Yeah. We get a bar stool full I, chair, yeah, yeah. which meant you almost fell off it and went through the window at the goat. In the corners, right? Yeah. The corners suck. So because yeah. he's trying to drum with that, and uh, that's hybrid drumming for us. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. like you've duct taped the kit the together. So yeah. You, you know, <laughs> you know the uh, like the old like the old swing the videos jet, where you yeah. see them having to open and close their hi hat. So I was doing that. Oh boy. Because there's oh, no yeah. foot, right? And so it was magical. <laughs> like, we never had to cancel a tour because Joe forgot drum parts, right? <laughs> if anything, it became like a little feather in the cap. It was it, uh, afterwards, yeah. it was like, yeah, give me a coat hanger, some duct tape, and I'm on my way. Yeah. But, or the other part or too is we yeah. were in Ireland and yeah. we were in a pub in the north. And we were jamming, but we only had what would fit in the van. Right. And Connor Bowden, our drummer, is like, obviously didn't have any drums with him. Right. So he goes to the mantle at the fireplace and he starts looking at the stuff and he pulls up a piece of firewood and a cup and a thing. And he just starts finding things. And before you know it, he's got a mini drum kit going and it's he's grooving. Like, yeah, it was yeah. wicked. Sounds like everyone's so, first drum kit. Yeah, right. exactly. Like an ice cream but, bucket yeah. and whatever. So Doing I that mean, to a pub full of people. We, and, we come and from that it. camp, but you can't trigger pyrotechnics from a log no <laughs> you can't there's a so, byline so right. then you look at like the the whole entertainment experience that whole show that big show whatever genre it is yep. how do you and so that takes us back to the modern day hybrid drumming yep. well, it's, it's crazy how much that has changed though because i don't know if you guys can pull it up as well but there's there's a photo there's well not just a photo there's mul- multiple photos of drummers literally just using um you know an sbd pad with a couple just rolling trigger kicks, things like that, running into their module. So they, these guys now are sitting on a stool with an SBD pad. You've got the all the triggers here, and they're playing an entire drum kit off of a pad. Right. You can still incorporate your kick, things like that. So yeah, you know, we talk about size of drum kits now compared to you know even the '80s, where I think of Motley Crue and Tommy Lee with the two big double yeah. bass pedals. Like, yeah, it was cool, but could you imagine being that guy's drum tech? Oh. Right, and I mean, and touring around the world, it would be a transport truck just for the just drummer. For the drum kids, yeah, right. Yeah. So there's fun drum memes of like, uh, you know, when you first start gigging and you see the drum kit on stage, and then like five years later, and it's like, you know, a four piece, couple cymbals, 100%. keep it simple, and then it's like later, and it's like snare, floor tom, kick, one cymbal. It's getting smaller and small. Everything yeah. is getting smaller. You yeah, know, yeah. You and I were talking earlier about you know guitarists not even have amps on stage anymore right like it really it really gives the ability now to have a nice open stage for every musician out there uh as well as it just uh it's i think it's easier for the band to travel with less gear you know Mm -hmm. you also hear horror stories about you know flying on planes and and airports destroying people's equipment or someone stealing half of that issue half of those issues are now gone yeah. Because you've condensed your entire equipment into in your like backpack. A backpack, yeah. exactly. Right. Like yeah. when I when I gig with my kid, I can throw everything in the backseat of my my car. I'm in the backseat of my Mazda. Yeah, right. that's unheard of, right? Right. So, yeah. 
without having to go like the other route in the acoustic uh, realm is all these guys doing these club kits, taxi cab kits, yeah. jungle conversion kits. The drums are just because the mics can yeah. do the heavy lifting now. We don't, you know, it's like I don't yeah. twenty four inch bass drum. Yeah, and yeah. and it's like yeah, it's great, but we we don't need it to be acoustically that loud. Yeah. Not only that, most of the people on stage don't really appreciate it the same no. way as they used to. Yeah. yeah. They're well, like, I want to... Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, you explain and yourself. So yeah. as a bass player, I've switched to just running a pre, yeah. and I don't have a cab on stage because yeah. we switched to running in-ears. And I will admit, like, when I rock out with, well, rock out, East Coast Celtic Irish music, but we do groove, funk, blues, yeah, whatever, fun, yeah. um, with a cab and a, and a big drum kit, it's awesome, it's fun, but... Th- the only person really loving that is me and the drummer, yeah. the only people. Yeah. And when I think about it, why am I there as a performer? Because yeah. if I want to do that, I can do that in my basement. What, what am I doing this for? I'm doing it for the audience. It's the audience's experience. So how do I improve, improve their experience? So by going to a pre, I eliminate stage volume. I make the sound for uh, the sound guy's job way easier. Way easier. I get in ears. So I'm hearing clarity and crisp niceness. So I, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, I lose a bit of that like air movement that I, I love and appreciate. But uh, the experience overall is way better. So so I've switched to that. And I, uh, I'm just working on getting a head that has the same preamp in it as my pre mm-hmm. so that I can... Um, have that cab experience when I when I can or need it, and it, it'll sound exactly like when I'm throwing a little preamp in my backpack and going yeah. anywhere with it. So a uh, big part of what you just kind of hit the nail on. So we talked about simplicity of like carrying, reducing the size of your gear. Yeah. Um, and I think a big part of it as well. A lot of musicians, regardless if you're going on the global tour, you're traveling across Canada, or you're you're playing. You know, you're a working musician in your your you know hundred kilometer radius control right you want the control back in your hands 100%. if you go to uh if you get booked for an event and there's a sound guy there and you can just say here's my line here's my sound yeah done when you go there and you know and then you know you're producing for your audience for your you know for the people that are there you, your product you're not in the hands of anybody else yep. back to the monitoring with the having all that the the you know the hybrided or simulated cabs and and stuff like that. The ability that you're no longer having this big loud stack means that the the in ear monitor experience, um, you know that what you're producing for the audience, you're now in control of your own sound in ways that we'd never had. Totally. Well, and think about turnaround time too. So say you're you know you got multiple bands playing that <sighs> show too, right? Yeah, yeah. You you always just see those guys running on stage as fast as they can to get that gear off and switched around like they're some type of pit crew, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah half of that now is just it's gone you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like maybe you're gonna set another drum kit up on stage but you're not watching guys come out and take stacks of amps out anymore and things like that so the turnaround time uh, on shows is a lot faster than it used to be too and that's yeah. it's all about condensing what you have now and once again the listeners experience is improved they Absolutely. they don't have that downtime waiting and you know, you're running some backing tracks or a DJ or something in between, you get right into that next band yeah. and they're, they're, they, the energy level stays up. So, yeah. Could, yeah. Wouldn't it be a dream if, you know, I, it, wouldn't it be amazing if you have one of those experiences where like the the, uh, the promoter or the the concert, the venue is like, oh, we've, we've got a kit here. You can just use it, right? Yeah. And it was uh, like a, a Roland V kit that every drummer could kind of dial in their oh. thing, as opposed to what we're provided when yeah. you do one of those events. And oh, they're like right. sitting there individually. It's like, no, you can't. Hey, maybe you're a drummer, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I've been told, you know, many of gigs, hey, listen, don't hit your snare so hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who, tells a, who tells a drummer not to hit the drums at the speed that they want to hit the drums at? Like, right. We all, we are, you know, especially as a drummer, you start to feel that music. You don't realize how hard you're playing, what you're doing. The nice thing about the V drums or, or any type of electronic drum now is when you go in and you got that sound guy, he can just slowly turn you down, right? Right. Because um, a mic snare can only go down so much. That's Especially, it. like, depending on the venue you're playing. And if yep. you're playing, you know... But spilling stadiums. into the vocal mics yeah. or wherever that sound's yep. traveling, yeah. I played a Questlove breakbeat kit <laughs> oh, yeah. at Casino Niagara <laughs> at a gig with, with a, a, a group I used to play with. <laughs> And my, it was like a cocktail kit. Yeah, right? yeah you talk about your, your taxi cab kit. Yeah, so. right? And, well, that's the reason we took it, because at the time I wasn't working for Roland. I didn't have a V-drum kit. So I'm like, I wanted something that was small that I could drive from my town up to Niagara Falls. When we get there and we're doing sound check, the guy's like, I'm not even going to mic your snare. I'm like, you're not going to mic my snare at Casino Niagara? He's like, no, it's so loud. 
But that that blew my mind. That even right. a cocktail kit, even a cocktail kit, I'm getting that's criticism. That's a tiny about drum being set. Too loud, right? Yeah. Wait, I, I basically with with our stuff, depending on what we're doing right now, I'm using a 16 inch bass. Yeah. I'm using a 13 inch 13 inch floor tom. Yeah. 10 inch mounted tom. Like these are tiny drums. And and I I can't even imagine going somewhere and they were, and they would say that at a venue that size yeah. right but it's that's the thing it, right it so. ended up being weird too because they mic'd they mic'd the whole thing for video so you have like you know I'm playing the song and they're they're making this great video of it and the tom sound good you know blah 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 blah, blah all mic'd up right into the sound and into the sound guy and then because they didn't mic my snare and you hear the recording it's like go 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 go. Uh, so uh, you know that wouldn't have happened if I yeah. had had a, a V drum kit at the time. So right. um, you know, just kind of going back into why V drums is is just a great product now to play live. Not just I think you know when I started working for Roland five years ago, the idea of V drums was this is a great learning tool. Yes, this is a great um, at home practice drum kit. But you never ever saw drummers playing v drums live it was touring. very yeah. or touring it was yeah, very yeah. very yeah, very yeah. rare and you know through my years of working through roland there's something i've learned is that the biggest feedback that we got was listen your kits are great the sounds are fantastic but it's very hard to look cool playing these drum kits live because it kind of looks a little robotic you can kind of see some legs and it's just it's not what you picture wires you dangling out of things right, right? Yeah. because so, you gotta you gotta plug it all in yeah right so you know when we came out with our VAD style kit, our, our virtual acoustic drums, that changed the whole game because there's no there's no excuse anymore. Yeah. Um, I love that they like they abbreviate, I'm just gonna take a moment with that. Virtual acoustic drums. Yes. Like you talk about we're doing a segment on hybrid drumming and, and that there's that the, is that's like, the virtual acoustic call it drums. how to VAD yeah, out of VAD. <laughs> 100%. But that that by itself, those those kits changed uh, the drumming market and we've seen it since twenty twenty uh, a huge influx of of huge musicians playing VAD kits. If you watch the last Super Bowl, that's a VAD kit. If you watch the last Grammy performance or the Grammy performances, those are VAD kits. There's a reason they're using those kits, and it's because it it's for a huge show, and the sound has to be perfect. Right. And you cannot do that on a standard acoustic drum kit today. Right. Even if you tried, you could have the best sound guy in the world, but something could be off. If you right. can have a guy who can literally just turn a volume down, turn it up, turn down your mids, scoop your, you know, yeah. that's that's a game changer, right? And and the playing experience uh, for the guy behind the kit has grown in massive strides. So, like, sitting behind the VAD feels a lot more like you're playing an acoustic 100%. kit. When you have right? a fully shelled kit, yeah. double, double ply mesh, it, you can tighten the lugs if you want more of a pop. It won't change the tone of your kit, but... It's that response. Partic- it's that particular for your needs. That if, like, I love a nice tight snare. I like being able to have that bounce back. So I tighten up all the lugs on my on my snare. So it's just like I'm playing my acoustic drum kit, but I can literally play Nirvana and then I can go play Boys in the Hood. And you can yeah, have that yeah. low fat sound with the 100%. tight response you love, right? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So it's uh, you know, I when I was teaching drums, I started teaching on on rolling drum kits, and I I started telling myself, man, I wish I almost personally had learned on VAD or uh, on Roland drum kits because back in that day when I was teaching it was a we were teaching on TD1Ks so very very small kits I know you yeah. guys had them here yeah. in the store the snare is very tiny right yeah, yeah. so what I had noticed from the kids that had been learning on these kits for years is by the time that they got yeah. to an acoustic drum they were pocket drummers right they were never hitting one rim ever and right. it's because they had they were taught on a kit that was a quarter size of a normal acoustic kit uh, th- though uh, we'll put out a public service announcement, we we really enjoy our drummers who uh, play on a big surface area. Our stick sales have never been better, Absolutely. right? Because they're chewing. The- it looks like a beaver yeah. got to them after they've they finished a set, right? <laughs> yeah. So so appreciating that. But no, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. For for my drum students, I, I, the line I always gave was "Aim small, miss small." Hundred percent. And and like there's this target. Wasn't that from? Yeah, hit it. American League of Gentlemen, uh, Le- League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I think it's, it's also Sean an Connery American said sniper it. or something. No, no, it's <laughs> League of Sh- it's Sean Connery teaching Tom Sawyer how to be a marksman. Then uh, I think they must says, have lifted it. He says, it "Aim small, that American small. sniper." Right? That's not that Sean Connery, but anyway. And he's like, "Aim for the button. You might miss by two inches. Aim for the shirt. You might miss." By Same two kind feet. of idea, but, but so but he, the he same said, logic. So he quoted Sean Connery. I was oh, quoting Sean Connery. Yeah, he's quoting League of Extraordinary. No, in American Sniper. Yeah, yeah, he's quoting. 
<laughs> I gotta go rewatch. Yeah, that. <laughs> you should like just get the aim small, miss small. Right? You try pipping the ace, young man. That's what you're oh, doing. Yeah. You're pipping yeah. the ace. Anyways, so that's the same logic though. I said like aim for create create these little fake zones that are this big. Actually, yeah. and they're not fake because we know the difference of hitting here to here Absolutely. on you a know, snare drum. Yeah, right? I, I will go here. It's kind of like the Canaan buffet. They used to put a bullseye so, in the urinal. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, hundred percent. Or the, uh, there is, I think they were doing them in uh, in Ireland. They were like painting flies. Yeah. In the urinals, and then making you aim for them. Not yeah. making you. Well, you would just you'd walk. You would. It's all psychological. You're like, you're you like, would ah, sucker. And, and then I love when Jack Astor used to put the ice in the urinals. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I was like, that's awesome. I got a mission now. <laughs> yeah, I got a mission now. Right. I was like, I'm gonna melt this all down. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a team effort. Yeah. So anyway, aim small, miss small. Back to drumming was was it for students. And you're right. When you're playing on a pad that's this oh, big, of you're going to. That's that's good learning that way. Well, right. And it. Music is so psychological, like on yeah. every level. Mm -hmm. So when you were talking about a VAD kit, yeah, sorry about that, Ryan. I kicked that camera. <laughs> um, the experience of it looking like a drum kit makes it feel better and sound yeah. better, even though you, you may not have changed those aspects. You may have, but at the time, you don't even have to change those aspects for you to enjoy it more. Yeah. And it's the same like everything from the small target. And, and once again, it's all psychological. It's the idea of that big bass amp. It's still psychological. What? Yeah, no, hit it. I think you're going there. Like no, the Getty talking, Lee? Yeah, get, I yeah. knew you were going to Getty Lee. Because he, a long time ago, from my understanding, went to a preamped my whatever backstage. And so he started putting, uh, for each tour, he wanted that something behind him feeling. So he'd put... Uh, washer like dryers they put the towels why he that's why because that. he never used cabs he was di he was hybrid long before anyone or they did chicken rotisseries or they did like an so arcade he wanted something to be in the spot where his cab yeah. should be yeah i remember seeing rushing why the hell do these guys and then laundry they come out for the the encore and they pull the warm towels out of the dryer and they dry and then it's they play a, a fun and so shtick, it, was, but it was a shtick about not having backline long before anyone wow. wasn't having backline i learned something new today yeah. i'd seen rush so many times and i'd always question even at the sars concert yeah, the hell these guys that was a crazy. You were there. I oh, was yeah. there. Oh, that what a, a shot! I was like a hundred meters from the stage during yeah. ACDC. That was an, I thought that was we were body experience. surfing people who blacked out, like out to <laughs> yeah. the ambulance. It was chaos. Yeah. Well, and then they're funny yeah. too. We have a SARS pandemic. They're like, let's put a half a million people all together <laughs> outside. I know. And well, and, was that was oh, yeah. and that was intentional. And that was intentional. And it was a we need to to break our our, our mental state. Yeah. That oh, was that that was what it was about? Not herd it immunity. Was, <laughs> was, uh, Dan Aykroyd was a, was a big part of that. He yeah. was emceeing, right? Yeah. And yeah. a big part yeah. of that was uh, and, and, and Rolling Rolling Stones were because Toronto got labeled as like a hot spot for SARS. Yeah. And so they're like, we want to let you know it's safe. It's so safe, in fact, we're going to put half a million. We'll bring the Rolling we're, Stones. We're, and the Rolling Stones and a half a million people. Yeah. No. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, you talk about those big uh, touring shows and, and just that I need something behind me to feel like I have something behind me. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a pioneer. I knew you were going to Getty Lee. That's why right. I was like, well, no, no. Con you con stay on the continue the story. Stay on the topic of Rush, you know, like, uh, you know, Neil Peart was a big fan of rolling drums. There's amazing photos of him playing, you know, TD30s, things like that. And I know for a fact that, you know, before he would go and play on stage, he'd have a rolling drum kit up back, and that's where he would do all his warm-ups wow. before every gig. Yeah. on a rolling drum kit. So well, we, and they're, know, they're whole, like Neil Peart yeah. promoting what you're doing, and you're, you've got a good product. And, and you talk about, A, precision drumming, yeah. and B, things that were cued. And the amount of things, because he had pads and triggers, and he yeah. again, those guys were super pioneers on everything we're talking about. Well, he, you know, he'd have songs where he played the xylophone, but realistically, he could have patched all of that yeah. into a an SBD pad and things like that. Yeah, it's just Neil Pert was Neil Pert, so he's like, no, I gotta play the actual. Well, yeah. well and he also, and again, we well, would appreciate and hats off to his drum tech. Oh yeah. well, hats <laughs> off to their techs who carry around dishwashers. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that guy's like, why am I here? Yeah. I'd rather carry the amp. Yeah. <laughs> At least I know how it handles. Yeah. They <laughs> built wheels into those. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Thanks to Alpita Cafe and Roastery. Uh, for keeping us caffeinated here while we're doing how-to underscore music, uh, make sure you visit them in shop to grab all your coffee needs, but you can also order your coffee to your house from them. So make sure you go to Alpita Cafe and Roastery. We'll put the link in the description.
Um, uh, uh, I'm going to switch it. We've been on the drums for a lot. I'm going to switch over to the uh, guitar amps for a sec. Okay. And bass amps a little bit more. So um, for a lot of guys, like for myself, I've got some lovely amps that I really love uh, that have not joined us on stage in over a year and a half now. And a big part of that is that uh, in my pedal board, I have popped in like a basic cab sim. Yep. And that's been doing the job really, really well for what we need. But there's there's guys that do take it a step further where they're like, my amp's at home. I really love that sound, but I don't want to lug it everywhere I go. So it's IR technology. Impulse response. Impulse response. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's a way where they're able to mic and capture, record their amp at home yep. doing its thing. Yeah, and then they're able to take it on the road as a as like a file Ooh. or in, yeah. Yeah. in a pedal. Stick it on an SD card or yeah. drop right. it into a Here's USB. my amp. Yeah, here's right? my amp now. Well, and what's crazy is a lot of musicians have to like. Where am I going with this? Okay, let's see here. So a lot of musicians play in many bands, right? So you have a guitar player who plays in twelve bands and he tours with all of them, and maybe there's two or three guitar players that sit in with them often in the pop genre or something where you have a lead vocal or the country music, they have a lead vocalist there. The name of the band is the name of the artist, Jane, Jane, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. And Carrie the, Underwood, the, do you want Carrie me to Underwood, Thank you. Yeah. You're a real one. I'm like, know, I'm like but the backing band changes probably oh, from sure. city to city, town to town. Yeah. So now you need a guitar player who's more diverse that can say, well, tonight I need a Nashville sounding pedal steel yeah. guitars, uh, whatever. Well, tomorrow I'm playing uh, reggae and the next day I'm going to be playing heavy metal yeah. and I got to have all those rigs. Well, you couldn't, you'd have to uh, tens oh. of thousands of dollars yeah. in amps and tube. I have a mess ahead and I have a, a PV Nashville this and I have a Blues Junior for this show and, and you would be carrying that everywhere you went. It was crazy. So yeah. so suddenly with, with impulse response, you can sample all those cabs, all those Neumann mics and preamps and yeah. and and tailor your sound, like you said, in an SD in, card. In a way that five, ten years ago, like I don't know when it really took off, but I'm hearing about it more and more now, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know when well, IR came out. Ke Kemper and Positive Grid, these kind of came out and they kind of started to change people's minds. But then you split the the world of guitar, right? You yeah. kind of had the traditional tube players and then you had the techie people. Um, well, this is a, sl but this this is is a slow burn. Though. Yeah. Like, this isn't it's, something like... But it feels like it's going... Oh, it's definitely going that direction. Yeah. 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 But it's the... Uh, it's the younger generation, the millennials and, and, and below, that are kind of really hopped on the, the wagon of condensing your product, going to more IR stuff, and, and having the ease of being able to go to a gig with just literally like a USB yeah. popping it well, in. Well, and, and they trust digital far more than oh, my, my analog hybrid upbringing, <laughs> right? It was, it was a really tough journey for me as a, as a new Roland rep six year, five years ago. Uh, to going into specific drum shops, like drum alone shops, and saying, hey, you need to buy this electronic drum kit to a guy who's in his like, late 60s. Right. It, was, it was a tough sell mm -hmm. to get people on it. This is the future of drumming. This right. is where, whether you like it or not, this is where right. drumming is going. We're going to, or not even just drumming, but music is, is going to this uh, uh, much more uh, technical and involving um, technology instead yeah. of just, you know, I blew my mind when or, I went and saw yeah. ACDC and someone told me that, hey, did you know that know, know that only one of those Marshall amps is a real amp? Yeah, yeah. The rest are just made out of wood. I'm like... And they're fakes. And they're all yeah. fakes. Yeah. But just to hurt, look like it. It hurt my soul to fight, right? <laughs> you didn't know that? Part? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So or that's why when like you watch, dummy you cabs, one right? mic to the actual amp and then the rest, the rest are, are just, just dummies. Because they it's similar back to your uh, washing machine, right? They yeah. just they need the look on stage. Yeah. Yeah. And people expect that well, look on stage. Let's yeah. be honest. It didn't start that way. They yeah. did need that stuff. Yeah. They did. Yeah, right? they did at the time. Well, I, you I go saw. back to uh, uh, the wall of sound. Um, well, think of Woodstock. Yeah, Woodstock. I, yeah, I saw like, a picture from uh, their cabling. And yeah. it was like it was just a hazard waiting to happen. <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of feet of cabling. Yeah, where yeah. You don't but need before a you today. had line arrays and the high-powered stuff that we have, yeah. you had really heavy, really big, yeah. complex things to make sound work. Right. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, back to you could you could throw it on a USB stick. Yeah. I find well, um, and 
you can have it on your tablet and your laptop and your phone. Like you can go, oh my my tablet didn't work tonight. I'll just pull up my phone and yeah. load up my samples. You can have your your backup plans. Like, like there's like, a lot of things really wild like that. You now. start to see a lot of laptops on stage now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people are running tracks off of that. So if you don't have a drummer that is creating some type of hybrid element in your band, a lot of the time the guitarist or the singer will have their laptop and they'll play the the tracks they'll trigger or whatever. It, yeah. Somebody's yeah. Somebody's, somebody's on that. Something. Yeah. Not in our band, but, but yeah. But if you're if you're going to yeah. a live yeah, yeah. Watch just out. wait though. But if you're going to live performance anywhere today, like if you're playing a casino rama or up, I can guarantee at some point in that show someone is using a trigger or some type of backing track. Because when you're at that level, you're not just playing standard music anymore. You're above a standard musician, I, I would say. You're, Your like, music is more constructed. There's yeah, a lot there's more. Yeah, there's a precision. To, there's a precision, exactly. There's right. a lot more to your sound. It, it's funny because like you talk about. Um, for me, like there's obviously there's lots of different types. This is like a silly statement. There's lots of different types of music, but I mean, <laughs> uh, but as a result, that like styles of music where you go to appreciate the precision yeah. and the product, and then there's styles of music where you go to see guys. I'm I'm not gonna say like like improvise. These guys have rehearsed to great lengths, For sure. but they're they're gonna pull stuff out of the you know the back pocket like you watch bare naked ladies live and these guys obviously there's precision including like little things that are in their set like the sandwiches song right like things like they're preset and planned yep. that are, have those kind of track moments but they also a lot like those just like oh, we're just going to make up new lyrics to something on the spot and we're just going to pull it right out of our butt yeah <laughs> and for me that's something that i always uh, like i aspire to as a performer um but i appreciate that like and there there are times where you go for it and it is absolute garbage right and there's like that joke did not fly and then there's times where we make a song about ice fishing on the fly i wish we recorded that i'm still upset we had jammed out somebody said write a song about ice fishing and joe went and started playing one and john and yeah it was amazing john and i looked at him like i didn't know joe had a song about this so we just start watching his hands and pull the hands over yeah and we finish i'm like joe that was amazing he goes yeah and i said when did you write that? He goes, just now. I'm like, what? And he's like, and I don't remember it. So yeah, we'll yeah, never I can't have recreate again. that moment. I was like, did anyone in the crowd have their camera running? Yeah. Like, yeah. I want this song. Want this it's song. gone forever. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was like a little, like it was lyrically, like, it was brilliant. The melody was nice. Yeah. It was a groovy uh, little, like. You even got creative with the chord progression on the fly. I was yeah. like, oh. there, there was definitely um, uh, pulled elements from like a little bit of the Taj Mahal mm. fish and blues, was a bit yeah. of an inspiration no, behind it, but it was not. So I would, I would tip my cat to an inspiration. I wouldn't say like, wrote from scratch on the fly, but oh, certainly it wasn't, like it. Uh, yeah. yeah, it certainly was I don't was my think own there thing. was a copyright infringement. No, I yeah. wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one right now, eh? The, yeah. the, um, there, it's coming full steam is that, that Ed Sheeran. Oh, I, but you hear them side by side. You're like, oh, come on. Well, it's, uh, everybody copies everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who, who are you going to see? There's only 12 today? notes. I mean, well, right, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Eventually well, you got to use them. Suing people go to the country albums. You listen to those. <laughs> it's G, C, E, and A. Right? Yeah. 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 And just played in different. Train, yeah. You know, strumming, yeah, yeah, strumming patterns and stuff. So, and, and yeah, you can only. And the other part too is like, uh, it was interesting. What what makes a style? Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna if you're gonna purport yourself to be part of a style, you're gonna follow a set amount of specifics that put you into that style. If you break too much of it, it's gonna end up as a different style of music altogether. Yeah. So there's only yeah. like if you're doing a doo wop or a, a like an old soul tune, your soul ballad, you're only gonna have so much that you're gonna pull from. Yeah. Before you stray from the genre. So. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that I, I just. Let's dial it back for yeah, a yeah, sec. Back. I got an idea here. Hit me. Maybe Matt could kind of give us a little direction on two two ideas. The first will be um, for our listeners. If somebody who's only playing an analog drum kit thinks to themselves, I'd like to try and add in a little hybrid something, where do I start? Right? Because there's a million ways to start. Yeah. So maybe you could walk us through that process a little bit. That's right. And then let's also maybe do that for a guitar slash bass player. Let's sure. just kind of say like right now I have my my the, cube or whatever my my solid state amp or tube amp how do we get to an impulse response sure. concept well with uh with with drums it, my my first question is like what are you what are you trying to accomplish out of being a drummer I, well say they saw the podcast and they don't even know okay like they just play at home drums yeah and they're like and maybe they they weekend warrior they're gigging yeah. You know, and they're like twice a month. Yeah, I just bars, think it might be cool to add top 40. a yeah. clap to my groove. I don't Old know how 40. to do this. Yeah, where would you start? That that kind of, like totally. I have no idea. I have no vision. I maybe I'm I'm just doing some cover songs and sure. it's classic rock, so it doesn't even seem like I need it. But it might be cool to add. I think you know the SPD pad. Uh, we have 
there's many different like so either we have the spd 1k which a lot of buskers use um, where it's just literally a kick so you know a lot of guys or girls that are performing out on the street they want to have some bass notes behind it to get people moving right well nice. the spd 1k is a great one for buskers uh, so for a guitarist who wants to incorporate a little oh, bit of nice. electronic yeah. into their yeah. sound. Um, but I would say for drumming-wise, an SBD uh, SX um, trigger would be probably the best thing and, to do. And does that have, like, the sounds built into it? So you have sounds built into it. Okay. You have backing rhythm tracks that are built into it. But that being said, if you wanted to incorporate your own, you can save them onto a USB oh, and just, just plop it in? into the back of your SBD uh, SX. And would that be like a WAV file? That'd be WAV files, yeah. Okay. And then you can it'll automatically upload into the into the module itself, and then you can play. So if your band's got someone going, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, you can record that, save it onto a USB, put it into cool. the back of your SBD, and you can use that now. So if you're playing your beat and you want to hit that, yeah. all you got to do is just hit that pad, and, and nice. it's going to play. And how many pads would be in a that? You, know, uh, like... you have uh, one, two. Three, Four, eight, 12 pads in 12 total. Pads. And um, you, got, like, you got four little ones up top, okay. four bigger ones, and then four bigger ones below that. Oh, nice. So and those can you assign anything to anywhere? Anything kind of you thing? want. You can change the velocity. So um, if you want it, you just to hit it, it'll just be one volume. If you want to hit it soft, and the, then the volume comes out nice and soft. Oh, so okay. It's it's a very dynamic pad. Thanks um, for explaining velocity because I don't yeah, know velocity if all are that, yeah. that's in the hybrid the electronic world and an analog guys going what's velocity right well especially back you know but, 10 years ago look at drum kits there really wasn't any velocity you know what i mean you would hit a drum and it would be the same volume every single time because right. the triggers just weren't there right now because everything is so incredibly triggered uh there's so many triggers in just that one pad alone that it picks up every bit of sensitivity so if nice. you're playing it softer it's going to come out a lot softer so i tell people like if you want to kind of just get it into the world of electronics with the, with with your drums, an SBDSX is perfect for that because it's not overwhelming. You're not having to run a whole band through it, um, but you can incorporate you know claps, you can incorporate chimes, um, you can run an entire backing track. So say like we were talking about orchestral stuff, you know what I mean? If you if you record an album with your band and you have a violin starting. Well, you can't have that live, or you could, but it'd be tough to find a violinist to tour with you. Mm -hmm. Now you just hit that pad once, yeah, and you can play it so it's the bands on the same click too, which is really cool. So the clicks built into it as yeah. well. Yeah, so oh. you can hit it. The click, the click will start, uh, and then the orchestral piece will start. So everybody, if you have in ears, you're you're going to be on time. Your your right. live performance is going to be flawless. So wow. that is a uh, a cheaper and uh, probably the most effective route to kind of get into hybrid drumming. Nice. And and the immediate the immediate thing that um, again you talk back to precision getting that level of precision is you know performing the the bands that perform to clicks versus not absolutely right so yeah. I've I've seen like you see the drummers and they just and then they go yeah. and you're never questioning what you know what the tempos are oh that you know oh I need the song at this speed to make sure I get my lyrics out yeah uh, oh if it goes a little faster I'm gonna trip over them can't blame the drummer anymore can't blame the drummer can't anymore can't blame the drummer anymore not when you're all on the same click anymore yeah, right? Right, so, right. Uh, but that you know that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to electronics for drums like there's so many things that just Roland offers like our RT mics are a huge thing you get yourself a module so uh, one of the TD50 brains for example from our TD50 drum kits. You can buy them individually, put it beside your drum kit, and then incorporate these, what they're called RT trigger mics, that you clamp onto your real snare, your bass drum, your toms, and you run those into the brain or module of, of that TD50 or whatever it be. And now you can take all the electronic elements that are in that module, um, whether it be different drum tones, different drum samples, and you can now incorporate that. So when you have that plugged into the house uh, you're, you're, it, it's going to overpower the sound of your standard snare and play whatever trigger is coming through. Oh, the module. okay. So that's, that's a really so cool one. So it feels acoustic to you. You're hearing an acoustic experience, but, yet you're sending out an electronic signal and the front of house is getting yeah. basically an electronic drum kit tone. That's exactly that. Wow. And, and that's what we're <laughs> seeing in a lot of our, our artists and our, um, that work with Roland are now, using more of these triggers now because they need things like that. They yeah. need those claps. They now, the, the symbol experience, what would you do in that setting, say you were using that? Uh, well, with symbols, like if you're going to be using traditional symbols, there's not much you can 
really do just run some overhead pencils for that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah like that you'll have to mic pretty much the same but then you know then i come back to saying well if if that's the issue then let's let's get you a vad kit where even the symbols are controlled through the main soundboard is there a trigger for a symbol not, not really not no. for the symbols no, no just for the pads so, so you is, either put in an electronic symbol there that would have all the triggers well, if in you it you wanted electronic symbol you could just program one of the SPD uh, pads to be to be a symbol. So if you right. wanted, like, um, say you're playing a house song or a dance song, uh, instead of playing that on your ride in your on your ride in your um, hi hat, you can just program that now onto your SPD pad. So now you're gonna boots, gots, boots, gots. you can uh, literally just do that now live. Right? Yeah, right. So okay. um, and, so and, that sounds and, like and a pretty take your TR eight hundred eight. Like, oh yeah, like the you, classics. You can well, now eight hundred eights built right into all of our machines. Of course, so if you want yeah. classic like you know, run DMC kind of vibe, <laughs> you know, like yeah. they're in there. And that, that's what I like to show. I, I got to do a grand opening last week and I showed people exactly that hybrid drumming. And I would play, I had a double kick set up on my kit and I'd be playing some really heavy metal for these kids. And then I would just take it over to the 808 setting and I'd put on boys in the hood. And then I'd play boys in the hood all in the exact same drum kit. Right. And it's note for note, exactly what that song sounds like because it's replicated off an actual 808. Right. That, that you couldn't have done ever. Right. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. 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 So and once again, it gives you as a drummer the ability to play in multiple genres yeah. and tour with any artist yep. and have a consistency, a pre precision, yep. as we've said, as well as uh, uh, the ability to fit into all those different genres where yep. if you go, I'm going to bring six snares on the road with me and this one's for my R&B night and this one's for my heavy metal night and this yep. one's for my jazz night. Like that's just not well, and not I used practical. to think I used to think that the hybrid drumming was was specifically for pop artists, dance artists, things like that, it's dance drummers, dance musicians, until we started working with Jay Weinberg from Slipknot, and then I realized that holy smokes, Slipknot is using triggers. Wow, yeah, you know I mean, so that just shows that it doesn't matter what genre of music you are, if you want to enhance your sound and your live performance, you are using triggers some way. Like when you're going to see a band today or a band tomorrow, I can guarantee at some point. If you hear something that doesn't sound like it's from a musician on stage, that's a trigger from something. So right. whether it be the drummer triggering it or somebody triggering it off a laptop. But I would say almost 90% of big ticket selling artists today are using some form of trigger. Right. So it really blew my mind when I started seeing uh -huh. Jay Weinberg play with triggers uh, and playing on a VAD kit. Guys just smashing away on a huge electronic drum kit. Yeah. But you can't tell. You just yeah. cannot tell. It's, it's funny because you talk about... Um, we we haven't hit. I'm going to say the the obvious one because it, it is that obvious that the the market on this was to the keyboardists for years. Well, it's yes. interesting, right? It was like yeah. it was they it was their market to be that guy in the yeah. band, yeah, and uh, and yeah. have that da -da 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 -da. And, the brass line, yeah, yeah. And, and all that. And I remember um, there was a really good demo I remember seeing uh, that Roland put on about talking about supernatural and and being able to achieve a thousand sounds and in, in you know in your pocket. And one of them was. Uh, they did this demonstration of a, a violin and, and how they did that, how they had that sampled was I closed my eyes and I was listening for it and it was really good. Um, but what part of it they were saying is that it was like their best example was the same like motion capture for Avatar. Mm. They're saying like there's like, you know, perfectly analog and then completely synthesized. And then their stuff with the supernatural was the two overlaid in like a mo almost like a motion capture. Yeah. Right. So it, it gave you the the this this really amazing hybrid way of yeah. of achieving their sounds. And so we left it to the keyboardists to be able to say we need a fiddle on stage or a violin yeah. or a well, flute or. It's interesting you brought up the keyboardists because last night I was doing sound for the Ennis sisters and uh, their Newfoundland. Uh, acoustic three-part vocal female harmony uh, with a bit of backup vocals from the keyboard player on the tech writer it was hopeful for a grand piano but the setting wasn't there for it so we're talking like uber analog like everything's baran accordion uh guitar like really as cool folksy as you get as folksy say, acoustic folksy, as yeah. you can get yeah and a bass synth yeah and a bass synth Bass synth right cool. beside the keyboard player set up. There's just a little rack down here on a stool or a chair. We had it set up and he brought a keyboard, but he, it was a piano setting all night. But bass lines come to just sitting under and bringing the whole mix down and yeah. a stomp pad like a trigger. Yeah. Now, it was a little more woody acoustic sounding. I don't know what brand it was or what it was, but there was the stomp that yeah. the lead uh, 
uh, Maureen was using, and then um, while she played guitar, and then the bass synth. So they to get that precision, to get that dynamic range, they did incorporate some sort of hybrid kind of electronic tone, which I did not expect. It's like and you're talking about, yeah, probably one of the most folksy tech riders. Yeah, to walk in the door. Now, we need, if a, we need a better breaks, Iran mic. Yeah, right. <laughs> if their laptop breaks, the show still goes on. Like, yeah, it, yeah. If the sound system, we had to mute it, they could still walk through the crowd, and, and it would be amazing. It. Yeah. it would be a Kaylee, a kitchen Kaylee after that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, uh, the hy- hybrid. It's, 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 it's funny you say that because a lot of people think hybrid is. A lot of drumming, and it is drumming focus. But I like to think about someone like Ed Sheeran. Ed mm-hmm. Sheeran doesn't pay anybody. So when that guy goes and plays an arena, he goes out with a bunch of RC600 loopers and things yeah. like that. He taps on his guitar to get the drum beats. He doesn't even have a band when he plays live. It's literally just him tapping his acoustic, looping in different things. So think about how much money that guy makes at the end of the day by not having to pay a band. Yeah. Or, or, hey, okay. hey, 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 hey. I'm a bass player. You're yeah. a drummer. I know. You're getting we us out of a game. job here. Oh, I know. But Sheeran, if you need a banjo player, give us a call. Say, there's no, a great right. video of, of Ed the Connors playing, brothers at, uh, <laughs> at playing at, at uh, Abbey Road Studio. And he plays this song and he just starts you know, beatboxing and then looping and then tapping his guitar. Wow. And it, it's, it just shows that this guy just created an entire band out of – by his vo- his vocals and tapping his guitar. Yeah. You know but what without I mean? the and technology. Without that technology, that it could wouldn't never, exist. Back yeah. in the day, you'd have like 30 guys trying to harmonize. Now he's yeah. harmonizing with himself. Yeah. Loop, looping. We didn't even touch looping. Yeah. Like, no, and and, and yeah, you see, like I think of, um, I know it's a way back playback, but uh, like when Katie Tunstall first came out. Yeah. And, and that, it, a lot of it was born from, and maybe same for Ed Sheeran, oh. from being a busker. Yeah. That yeah. You, you, you're forced. Like obviously splitting the hat revenues at the end of the day, you start, yeah. you know what I mean? You you count each nickel quite yeah. literally. <laughs> well, that's, so. Ed Sheeran always says that. He's like, I was a busker who got lucky. You know right. what I mean? And yeah. it, it's kind of true. Like Ed, ha- Ed has a great voice, but he wasn't doing that any, you know, that, uh, anything spectacular. A lot of buskers are out there looping. Yeah, we right. sell more loopers to buskers than we do to live performers because right. not many live performers are looping live. Yeah. But when they're playing and they're busking out on the street, you know, so well, uh, you you go from a three minute pop kind of song to a twelve minute song. 100%. If you if you're if you're busking, why not? Or why not? fourteen minute. You know, you yeah. get that loop going, and okay, you can kind of reserve some energy for I, that long day ahead of you. I yeah. did. Um, uh, whenever I there was these little road trips I would take out east, and part of it was they were busking trips. So like I say, the best way to to learn a city yeah. is to busk it. If you get a chance, it's just like it's not for everybody. I'll say that. So I would set up, I'd, you know, check the city rules. Don't just do this. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah. we, I'd set up, and I had a Boss Me eighty. Oh, right on. And bat, run it off the batteries, a little battery amp, set up on a street corner, and uh, and I was looping down a bass line and using like you know a faux bass line because it was like the octaver, and then and then I would lay down the bass line and then I would just whittle over top of it for a bit. Yep. And then uh, and and that was that was a way to go. And so I, I can definitely appreciate that when you're doing the busky thing, yeah. you learn to loop. And it blows yeah. people's minds too. Like if, if if you're out on the street and you know you're hearing multiple different sounds and things like that. If you don't know what looping is, you're going to get a crowd there no matter what because they're right. blown away by how does one man have so much sound? Yeah. You know yeah. Man? yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, the looping situation is just growing and growing. And now you're seeing artists that are specific, like, I'm just a looping artist. It's all I right. do. So, like, it's almost becoming a genre on its own. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and with a little practice, like, there's lots of different realms to get into it, obviously. You know, the, the, the more zeros after your RC3, RC30, RC300, oh, yeah. the more keep RC3 zeros. million. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, an entire, yeah. like, uh, building's worth of, of places to step. But, no, the idea that, you know, the you with a couple of pedals and a little bit of control yeah. uh, and practice, that's yeah. the biggest thing I find is that with, with any of the, the looping stuff, you really oh, yeah. got to tr- treat it's, it like an instrument. Yeah. The timing is, is not always easy. Yeah, yeah. So as much as learning a chord progression, it's as much time that you would spend strumming in chords as oh, yeah. you would tech. Yeah. So yeah. whether it's uh, looping or impulse response or hybrid drumming programming or you know recording wave files, yeah. all of that is a learning curve. So. Oh, well, and you don't um, even have to like with our RC six hundred for example. Like you, there's a mic input now, so yeah. you don't even just loop your your guitar now. You're looping your vocals through there too. Oh wow. You're looping your vocals in there with. You know, pitch correction, harmonies, like it's 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 endless. You wow. can sound flawless live now with with one box. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, 
you can sound as flawless as the folks at Boss and Roland can make you yeah, sound yeah, flawless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. still have to rehearse. You still have to rehearse. You've got to put, put in your but, time. Uh, but, you know, to <laughs> roll it back to the analog side, yeah. we were... <laughs> It's very true. Yeah, we were in uh, Ireland and we got the opportunity to busk on Grafton Street down oh, there. That would have been cool. And it was our, our good friend Stephen Pepper who lives over there. He arranged to get the permits, like you said, check yep. the bylaws, yep. to get the permits in place for us to have a one day busking experience. We made enough to buy a round of beer for everyone because oh, we nice. didn't have a looper. Yep. So I was singing bass lines and clapping because there was no hydro. So I, my electric bass wouldn't be useful. Yep. And so we went acoustic, fiddle, baran, banjo. Banjo, we, I don't yeah, because yeah, yeah. Pepper, Connor, Barb, you, me, John. So yeah. it took six of us to generate what one guy could do with a looper yeah. if he had a battery. Yeah. But yeah, and, uh, and then you have to split that amongst a bunch so of So we got a round of beers. But that, I think that we got one guy could have had six beers. In the oh, morning too. yeah, yeah. Oh, but what that's an experience. Much. And mm. and so there's still a lot of merit in six people going out to make a round of beers uh, by singing on the corner. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we I, had a great When time. I did the busking trip, I paid for camping. There's some YouTube videos like yeah. it was like I would camp and it would pay for my campsite. Yeah. Right. So it was like it, it was uh, maybe good, good we'll money. get Ryan to splice in a bit of that footage because it's on YouTube. The I, the Ireland stuff. Us busting yeah, yeah, and drafting. So we'll splice in some chunks for people to see. Yeah. Like, yeah. As in like right now. So that was great footage. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that works. <laughs> so back to the uh, second part of my question was, now a guitar player or bass player starting out, I want to get hybrid. Go. Yeah. How would we kind of start that process? Well, there's, there's lots of products that roll in there. Our boss would offer. Uh, we have like the GT1000, GT100, GT1000 Core. These are, these are all processors that will allow you to take your tone from your amp, your sound that you want, and replicate that live by just having a floorboard on the, on the ground. Yeah. So it's, once again, it's just, you know, it's it's a lot easier for every artist out there. It's not just for drummers anymore. Right. It's about condensing while keeping the exact same tone and sound that you have from your recorded albums. Now, if somebody was like, I just want to try it, what would be, is there a most affordable product from, like with a, the a Pocket G, a, GT? A pocket GT is great. That would have that built into it? Is there impulse response? I'm not sure. Uh, the Pocket GT, not so much. The Pocket GT is more so just known for its, just, you know, if you want Jammed full to of jam tones. with some good tones and something yeah. that's this big. And it's a wonderful learning tool. It's a it's a learning tool, but I wouldn't gig with it. Like yeah. I have a I have I have I have one at home and I, I just just to play around, give some new sounds and things nice, like that. Nice. But you know, once I GT100 is really good to just really. That's wanna, the kind of that first step. That gets you a first. performance floorboard that has that. You stuff. have a GT1 as well. Uh, but a GT100, I think it's probably a little worth bit the jump. Yeah, I think yeah. it's worth the jump because it's not overwhelming and it is something that you can still play with live. And then once you get good at that stuff and you learn it, uh, you can move up into bigger and better things. We have right. we go from you know, 150 bucks up to you know, yeah. five six thousand dollars. Yeah, really and the, the GT100 for. does it have bass in it as well? well there's a GT. Uh, there's there is a GT1B now. Oh, okay. So there is. They didn't call it the BT100. I the GT100B. That, that, uh, GT100B. <laughs> I thought GB100 would be way yeah, cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, I'm just. But they do they do have it. That's it. Is like we do have the same products for 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 the bass players as well because I know well, as a bass player you know like, yeah. I don't get as much love. Uh, no, no, you, yeah, to, we we love you. Well, remember, yeah. you know, even when I brought in, I brought in some of the Waza Airs. We could talk yeah. about the Waza Air headphones for days. I think this yeah. is probably one of the coolest products Boss has ever made. And and I remember the video that you guys did. That was so for funny. For promoting it here, <laughs> Connor's music was like one of the greatest videos I've ever seen because it was just quiet, right? Yeah, we'll put a sample of that in. Yeah, that was a great video. <laughs> Let's place that. Let's in. take a look. <laughs> Man, I wish we had these years ago. <laughs> that was a great video. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that product. We'll have to is, work on this. <laughs> that product is a, actually probably a really good tool for someone who wants to learn, um, well, how to to be quiet at home and practice, but to learn uh, how it feels to play with different tones and different mm. sounds, and and the fact that you can change 
uh, the size of the room you're playing in, right? So right. I always try to empower kids to buy it and say, hey, listen, you want to know what it's like to play at the Air Canada Center? Yeah. Click the arena setting right there and play along to your favorite song, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's even a great way to, because it's all done through through our app, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to kind of learn to go in there, choose your tones, save your settings, save your patches, things like that, yeah. before actually going out, buying something a little bit more expensive than trying that live. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Uh, is there, um, if you had like the, the, we'll call it the technologically uh, challenged, those yes. who would be very much like, and again, this is the hardest part. It says part. software update, and that's a problem. Right, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like US what? USB? Yeah. Right? And they're like, <laughs> what's the USB? Right? When they come in looking for the USB. Yeah. Um, so uh, is there like a stomp box that'll give you at least like a decent amount of amps? Like, not you're not taking your amp with you. You're just going to dial in a preset that like... Yeah, as, like a, a GT100 would, would, would be Would do good. that, similar to that? Yeah, and it's probably like, the nice thing about Roland, and, and it's not because I work for Roland, but the, the amount of help that you can get provided to you by Roland. So we offer Roland Backstage. It's free to any Roland customer out there. You go on there, you ask your question, within 48 hours, you have a response from a specialist. Oh, nice. So, oh, so that's... Yeah. So when they go, what's an USB? Then yeah. the backstage guys Roland will be contact. like, well, the USB, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> contact Roland the backstage. You know, so there's a lot of help. The backstage guys um, are going to hate us. <laughs> like, like. Every time we launch a new product, we put out high quality videos, demonstration videos, educational videos. So you can learn and do a deep dive of literally any product we put out there. Yeah. But if you want more of an in-depth, then you're not into watching videos and you want to talk to a human. Well, take advantage of Roland backstage because... Cool then you're going to have every question answered by quite literally like, you know, a Miles Gibbons or, you know, some of our product specialists. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's endless. And, and the, the help that Roland will provide is, is great. So that's phenomenal. A GT 100 would be a great tool to get a guitarist, um, into figuring out what kind of tones they're looking for instead of carrying around some big old giant amplifier everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. And again, that you go anywhere, doesn't matter what's provided yeah. direct to PA. If they've got a, you know, if they do have a, a back line at the club that you're playing, yeah. you're ready to go. And this is, you know, whether you're gigging, you know, the garage parties and the backyard parties to yeah. touring globally. Yeah. Well, if we get back to drums for a sec, you know, you and yeah. I were discussing before the, uh, this podcast that, you know, who's, who's, our, who's our number one seller or buyer of VAD drum kits? And it's, it's churches. Mm. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Why do you think there's a reason why churches are buying these drum kits? If you've ever been to church and you watch the band play there, what's the what do they always have in front of a drummer? A big old chunk of glass, yeah. or a big old chunk of drum shield. Or, yeah, yeah, drum, drum shield. Yeah, right? yeah. Get in to, your hole. Yeah, get in your exactly. hole. Exactly. No, but to, to, to quiet down the drummer. Yeah, right? control. Because it's just gonna bounce around. That sounds in, in gonna be. Like, yeah. Well, and, and from a sound guy perspective, you often end up with you know four, five, six, twelve vocal mics, oh, okay. a choir. Yep overhead condensers hanging mm -hmm. and then you get a drum kit pounding and then you have an 80 year old person in the front row with hearing aids yeah. who's getting blasted and it's a horrible experience for them yeah. right and you're like well this isn't working but you're right once they they switch to this and um once again it's psychological for the drummers they want to hit that acoustic kit so getting a vad experience where it looks like a, a real kit it starts to feel, feel exactly like a real, like a real kit yeah. and you can control that sound precision once again we yeah. come back to that concept that you nail it and yeah. now that 80 year old person in the front row has the same wonderful experience as the person as the 16 year old kid in the back row or whoever it doesn't matter they yeah. can all experience it and, and then and think about it this way too is the drummer now can if there's if they're covering uh you know a song by by some christian rock band and at the beginning of that song for example they have we do a back to orchestral or I'm just trying to think of a yeah. lot of like No, they would music, trigger a lot, a lot of stuff. Big, yeah. A lot of big, yeah. you know, vocals and or, um, you know, having uh, artists sing in the background. You can trigger all that now without mm -hmm. even having a choir. You don't yeah. need a choir anymore. Or a guy just got to hit one or, or ocean yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah. You can, you know, you hear a lot of uh, big Christian songs, you know, big tempes, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. You can program your drum to that sound like a, a tempe yeah. now. You know well, I mean? and so, a lot of them are recording and live streaming those masses now. And, the, and those uh, choirs. So once again, having that control and precision that you're when you send it up to the live stream, you're yeah. not getting 
I was watching the live stream and all I heard was the drums. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, we're well, doing our best with that. We got three more drum shields uh, this week. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take we'll one put a roof go. on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, you know, doing a shout out of technology brought out for, especially, you know, the amount of live streaming through COVID that was like, that was a, a must. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we we too are appreciating the Roland product for uh, live streaming. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you were taking it. Yeah. I saw you take a little gander as you walked in. You're like, hey, check that out. Yeah. Roland Aerocaster. Yeah. yeah. So our our, our uh, podcast is uh, powered by the Roland Aerocaster, and it's actually brought this system out for my 20th high school reunion. Yeah. And That's super cool. Uh, the most. Uh, like the, the one person that was like, oh, we could just film it, right? And I was like, like this gonna, this, we're gonna do this once. Yeah. Let's capture it. Let's capture it right. Yeah. Um, and then there's people who can't make it. Send it off to the teachers who there's some that are ill and whatnot, and the other students who live far away. Yeah. And uh, using the Aerocaster was probably it's like like I can't think of another way to do that that affordably and using just our cell phones and tablets that we had kicking around. It, it is. It is pretty it's funny powerful. funny how Roland Roland saw an opportunity when when COVID really got bad, and we knew like, hey, people are going to be home, and you know, lessons are going to go online. Yeah, podcasts are just going to blow up because it's all you can do. Yeah, right. So yeah, coming out with the Aerocaster, um, all of our st- the biggest sales I've ever seen in my life of Rubik's interfaces mm. you know oh, everyone's yeah. home recording. Yeah, biggest biggest year of sales I would say in drums. Because kids want to learn how to drums, but parents didn't necessarily want to hear them. And they're, everybody's yeah. at home. And everyone's at home. So now you have a drum kit. Let yeah. me say this again. A drum kit that you can plug headphones into that has a warranty right. that if you beat it up too much, you can have it repaired. There's nobody else that will offer that. So our yeah. drum sales went through the roof. Piano sales went through the yeah. roof. Because I think, especially that year, people really needed music. And they That's needed a great something way to put it. constructive mm-hmm. instead of just vegging out on their couch and literally finishing Netflix. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I was pretty close to finishing Netflix. And I'm like, <laughs> this is bad. I need to do Would you like to go continue write a watching? Song. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's bad when it, when it says, are you sure you still want to watch? <laughs> they, when or you fall problem? asleep and you wake up <laughs> and it's like, it's just that screen is just saying that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're like, how long yeah. has it been? Yeah, so, uh, yeah definitely it was... Um, I, like I think of it as uh, music being a godsend in, in the midst oh. of that. We had students signing up and people, yeah. you know, that was a thing for them to, because the people needed an outlet and they oh, were screaming yeah. for it. And yeah. uh, so it was, it was great. And the fact that, uh, you know, Roland has the technology at their fingertips to be able to put that out. And, yeah. you know, all the companies, all the tech companies that were providing things and outlets for that would became mm-hmm. essential services. But Absolutely. in a lot of ways, that's exactly it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, Once music again. music saved lives that year. I would say, yeah, it really, I, at least 100%. saved our sanity. At least. Yeah, well, and that's that's you know? lives. But I will say though, to be back out and being, you know, to perform again and go to concerts and just be around people again, it's it's a great. Thing. It's beautiful. I, yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, though. no, I agreed. But I yeah. think because of that, there's this like little blip where obviously, but the the blip is we were, you know, that little learning curve moment or that switch over musically culturally of like how much technology do i bring on stage when we were forced to live stream forced to do that and then we go back out live well i'm now a lot more comfortable yeah with with tech than i was before i'm far more willing to say oh yeah i'm I'm going to use the the at-home system i was playing with regularly and streaming yeah and now bring that live in your monitors for us that was like yeah, it accelerated everything. Let, uh, let me rewind because I had a, a very specific experience with a guy who wanted to do home recording, was doing it, had garage band or whatever set up and went, how do I get a good drum sound? And I went, well, you buy this thousands of dollars of mics, yeah. you plug it into all these wonderful oh, yeah. preamps, yeah. you need to multi-track, you know, 12 tracks, and then you need to mix that after and EQ it and add compression and gating and all that stuff. And he's like, yeah, by the time you're done, you're or like 10 grand. you buy this electronic drum kit for yeah. eight grand yeah. and you have a patch cord. Well, two, let's go stereo. We'll be fancy. Yeah. <laughs> and you're in and you're done. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. it was wild. Uh, and then it also has MIDI. So if you, so simply here's great drum sound. Yeah. Here is now MIDI cable. You can spend time learning that. Yeah. And yeah. then suddenly you can program MIDI and then you can also now understand all that. Once you do the MIDI, then you're looking at all those tracks as if you were doing sound for an acoustic kit. So he still kept the acoustic kit yeah. and he could then choose, oh, I'm going to get some drum mics. I got a mixer. I'm going to figure out how to do this. But it, it, instantly he was getting amazing drum sound for his yeah. recordings because his bandmates were 
at their houses going, send me a drum track. Yeah. And he's going, how do I do that? that and was, they're, that was my whole year of 2020 is, yeah. Hey, I need drummer. I need some songs. Can you come do this? Well, I can't. There's a pandemic going on. Yeah. Well, now I can. You know yeah. what I mean? I take a simple interface, take a simple recording program, take my electronic drum kit, plug it in via quarter inch cable. Yeah. Which hasn't changed. Which has not changed. Yeah. yeah. I record my drum track and I send it off to whomever needs the drums. There's right? a single wave file, perfectly yeah. mixed drum track. Yeah. It's yeah. that easy. Uh, and on the hybrid thing, something that I've done in shop here, like, cause we have, we have the ability to record at different levels. But one of the things that we sometimes get caught in is the, the sheer volume of when you like want to do a drum kit and do it really accurately. Right. Yeah. So, uh, for, I'm going to say more for creative scratch tracks, not for like a finished polished sure. product. Yeah. Um, but what, what I was doing was having the bass drum and the toms were electronic, but my snare and cymbals were acoustic. Okay. And so I'd overhead those because I really wanted my, I've got this really cool uh, Tama vintage snare I absolutely love. And I know there's things out there that are like it, but I really wanted that snare drum and I really like my cymbals. But the kick, I was like, I want the isolation on the toms and I didn't want the buzzy sound between yep. toms to snare. So being able to, like, there's a hybrid moment for recording. Yeah. And when now you can get a great drum sound in four tracks. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. snare, is, yeah. bass, two well, overheads. Even your scratch checks can sound fantastic yeah. today. Oh, yeah. I mean? yeah. Well, we use that for a finished product on somebody's. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of, I've done that. And, yeah. and yeah, yeah. so you got like your patch cord gets you all your toms and your kick, and then you got a snare mic and overhead mic. And yeah. you three, Done. Or yeah. three, two three channels and, and the parts of your kit that you, you know what I mean? That snare drum you love. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? You still sure. get to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love 100%. that. Hundred percent. Yeah. Anyways. And it's super loud. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a cool it's a cool time to be uh, to be a musician. Really, it's a very exciting time to be a musician because my parents used to be in the music industry a long time ago before I was even born. They used to manage the band Lighthouse. Oh, oh wow. no so way! I grew I didn't up know that. with wow. like Skip Prokop and yeah. all these guys. Uh, I had no idea. So to 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 watch their whole live performance back in the day and the amount of gear and slugging and we did sound for them uh, like a, a few years back now yeah. but at the theater here I bet you yeah even at the theater they had tons of gear right? tons of gear yeah. and they're traveling light and small but and yeah. a lot of di's but it was still a huge amount of gear and i find it is more so those bands that are still kind of into that mentality of, of bringing in the gear mm -hmm. bringing it up on stage and having everything set which is totally cool not against it i think those no. pioneers yeah. of what created today's music yeah but you still have to be open to the idea of growing with the world and growing with technology. And I think that's where the millennials and all these younger kids are kind of getting that. The, they got the right idea. You yeah. know what I mean? that mm -hmm. it, it is the way the world's going. And, and you know, for me, I go back to, you know, when I first started working with Roland is trying to convince all these older drum shop owners, like, listen, these are not toys. This is the future, the ways, the, the, the future of music. And then five years later to see their store stocked with Roland V drums. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I go, I told you. Right, right. You know what I mean? Even the, um, like the little bats or the little rim clip ones, right? Like those are like for like, because there's the R Tom where you, uh, or the R kick or all that, the R, where you would trigger the actual snare drum, but where you put a trigger just on the side of the snare drum. Yeah. I love yeah. that idea or the little, the little bat ones where it's like, you know, you need a sound or oh, two. Oh, the BT1 triggers. Yeah, 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 the BT1. Yeah. yeah, they're great. Yeah, if you just want like a single like clap trigger and that's yeah. all you're going to need, a BT1 is perfect because you can clamp that onto your tom or whatever you want. We've got something in the shop right now and, and yeah, catch me on the product codes. It, it's a, like a two, two stomp uh, pedal to trigger in. It's on the floor right now. We've got it. And I think it's the SBD2. Is it the SBD1K? Is it for the kick? No, it's not. It's not. It's like two... Two triggers in. And I was using it anyway, moral of the story, I was using it for um, for a couple of shows we had yeah. where I'm, I, I not only do I kick, yeah. so I'm playing banjo, but we wanted the kick just like you're describing, but I really wanted a, a chick, a chop, a snare, oh, something. Okay. Yeah. So I use that unit and uh, and have had some good luck with that. And then, um, but it's like, like so there's an example of like, um, just two sounds. I just needed two sounds. So you yeah. just gotta... I want... <laughs> Right. And I, and I didn't need it to be like full on clap, just like a. Tss, yeah. Right. The equivalent, because a lot yeah. of the times we do this where I'll hit the bass drum and then I'll shop a hi hat and then keep the, the bass and the backbeat going on while I'm playing yeah. and singing. Yeah. Right? That's the. Now the, that worked great. But yeah. 
Joe also wears a kilt. So a little dangerous. We switch back Very to the dangerous. acoustic bass drum. I need, the, I need some bass drum in front of me, <laughs> or else it's a little too much leg. You know? yeah, yeah. Sorry to the front row that day. Yeah, that was a little. That yeah. was a little rough. It yeah. was luckily a curling event. Uh, yeah, yeah. So curlers, they, they know how to party. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. a big bond spiel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Down in Toronto, they're okay with a flashy kilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To anybody who was there, well, we and you know they 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 were uh, calling Kilted. us back for other things. So maybe they, they maybe, well, really yeah, they might have got some tips that day. Yeah, exactly. Yikes. Yeah, good yeah. turnout that day. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in a kill here. Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, it is, oh. uh, it, it is interesting finding all those different ways to, when you really sit down and say, like, I, when you say, I need X and I need to find a way to produce X while I'm doing everything else that I'm doing, mm -hmm. there's like, I always say like, there's, there's probably like, if you can think it, there's probably somebody who's been in the same boat and there's a solution for 100%. it. You just got to get digging. If you find that magical, nobody's done it and either go patent it or you probably have to lunch. It's one of the other right. two. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is either a really great idea and go patent it or maybe rethink it because it's like a little too out Most there. Most of the time someone's thought of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. In today's world, most no, things for sure. Part of. Yeah, and there's yeah. there's so many tools out there that we, you know, if you do a little digging, you can find and take advantage of. Yeah, yeah. We feel. I think that concludes our yeah, podcast. Sure. I mean, that was mint. I had yeah. a great time. Uh, thanks for coming out, Matt. Thanks this for was having me. Brilliant, and I love uh, you guys. Yeah, known you for years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, welcome right, back probably. anytime. Yeah, well, we'll be at uh, I'll be at Music in the Streets. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna see yeah. you for Music Coming in the Streets. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, sweet. Glad you're gonna make it out for that. Yeah. Right. Have a good time. So thanks. It's another uh, how to music, how to hybrid your music. Uh, I'm Joe Connors. I'm David Connors. And uh, thanks for watching thanks, and listening. Matt. Thanks, Matt. You're such a beautiful lady. She said.